Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Uh, we will begin very shortly. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, announcing the arrival of our distinguished speaker, accompanied by the Vice Chancellor and our VVIP guests. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, kindly stand for the national anthem of Malaysia, Negaraku, and the official University Science Malaysia song, Munara Ilmu. Thank you. Sains Malaysia menara ilmu tercinta Jadi tumpuan antara bangsa untuk segala cita-cita Berinovasi, berteknologi, berwawasan, berkualiti Biar usaha kami bersemi akrab dalam berseri City, Sains Malaysia menara ilmu tercinta Jadi tumpuan antara bangsa untuk segala cita-cita Kindly be seated, thank you Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yang berbahagia, Profesor Dr. Dr. Omar Osman, Vice Chancellor, University Science Malaysia, the Honorable Professor Dr. Shuji Nakamura, University of California, Santa Barbara, our distinguished speaker this morning, the Honorable Mr. Kiyoshi Itoi, Consul General of Japan in Penang, Yang berbahagia, Professor Dr. Dr. Ahmad Shukri Mustafa Kamal, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic and International Affairs, University Science Malaysia. 
yang berusaha Mr. Jafri Ibrahim, CEO of the Collaborative Research in Engineering Science and Technology or CREST, Principal Officers of University Science Malaysia, our distinguished guests, representatives from the government agencies as well as the industries, fellow academicians, researchers and students, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning. Salam sejahtera. Selamat datang and welcome to a very distinguished and special lecture series, the Nobel Laureate Lecture Series, featuring the Honorable Professor Dr. Suji Nakamura, talking about the future of energy efficient lighting and displays, or more specifically, the development of in-GAN and GAN light emitting diodes and laser diodes for energy efficient lighting and displays. On behalf of the university, on behalf of AINO, and on behalf of CRES, we would like to welcome and extend our uh, warmest welcome to the uh, Honorable Professor Dr. Shuji Nakamura and for, and for accepting this invitation to speak here in University Science Malaysia. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed with the agenda of this morning, I'd like to kindly invite Yang Berbahagia, Professor Dr. Dr. Omar Osman, the Vice Chancellor of University Science Malaysia, to say a few words. Dato. Thank you, Arman. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. A very good morning to everyone. Uh, the Honorable Professor Dr. Suchi Nakamura from University of California, Santa Barbara, our distinguished speaker this morning. Honorable Mr. Mr. Kiyoshi Itoi, Council General of Japan, Penang. My uh, fellow colleagues, Deputy Vice Chancellor Dr. Ahmad Shukri, Dr. Muhammad Jantan, Professor Abdul Rahman, Mr. Jeffrey Ibrahim, uh, CEO of CREST, uh, my dear colleagues and distinguished guests, and representatives from acad agencies and fellow academicians, and also from the industry. First and foremost, let me extend my warmest welcome and appreciation to everyone in this hall this morning who make an early uh, start to join us in this pleasant morning to be with the Nobel Laureate Lecture Series to this time by the Honorable Professor Dr. Suchi Nakamura. And we all know that Professor Nakamura recently received the Nobel Laureate Awards in Physics in 2014 for the invention of efficient blue light emitting diodes, or LEDs. This definitely has enabled bright and energy-saving white light sources to be moved to a further front on technological development. It is also my great pleasure and our great pleasure to honor uh, Professor Nakamura to speak here using the Nobel Laureate Lecture Series uh, entitled Future Energy Efficient Lighting and Displays. On behalf of USM, let us give a big round of applause for Professor Nakamura. <laughs> the lecture series has seen about three to four Nobel laureate coming to USM. And it is our intention to bring uh, annually with the support of our colleagues from the industry and also from embassies to bring one at least to USM every year. And we're delighted definitely also with the great support of uh, the Japanese Embassy, definitely through the Council General, Mr. Kuyoshi Itoi, and the Deputy Council General today. And I also like to thank the Division of Academic Affairs, the Institute of Nano Optoelectronics for Research and Technology, or INO, our youngest research center in USM to date. Give a big round of applause. And uh, INO is going to work on a big project with the University of California, Santa Barbara, uh, beginning a few months ago and definitely for a few years to come. Again, also I would like to thank Jeffrey uh, for being supporting and supportive of us through CRES, the entity called Collaborative Research in Engineering for Science and Technology, a private sector entity uh, played by and very actively involving industries USM and also the public sector and the uh, semi-private agencies from the government, including NCIA. 
I don't think so I want to give a public lecture today. Let's wait and hear from Professor Nakamura. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Thank you, Yang Berbahagia, Professor Dr. Dr. Omar Osman, Vice Chancellor, University of Science Malaysia. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the highlight of the day, before we get to hear from the man of the hour, as allow us to take a brief glimpse and walk through to the background of uh, Shuji Nakamura Sensei. But it's, to be honest, it's extremely hard to condense such a formidable and, and, and brilliant body of work into a few sentences, but we will try to do our best to introduce Professor Dr. Shuji Nakamura. Professor Nakamura obtained his bachelor's, master's and doctoral degrees in electrical engineering from the University of Tokushima, Japan in 1977, 79 and 1994 respectively and he joined the Nichia Chemical Industries Limited in 1979. In 1989, he started the research of blue LEDs using group 3 nitrate materials and in, a year later in 1990, he developed what he calls is one of the biggest breakthroughs of his life and his gan research which is the MOC MOCVD system for GAN growth, named the two-flow MOCVD. And uh, in 1993 and 1995, he developed the first group three nitrate-based high brightness blue-green LEDs. He also developed the first group three nitrate-based video laser diodes, or LDs, in 1995. In 1996, his former company, Nichia, started commercializing the white LEDs based on his invention of the blue LEDs. And uh, the, to give you a perspective, the electric consumption of the white LEDs is about only a mere one-tenth in comparison with that of the conventional incandescent bulbs. And in 1999, Nichia started commercializing the video laser diodes for the application of the Blu-ray DVDs. So in essence, without uh, Professor Nakamura's invention of the vi uh, violet laser diodes, the Blu-ray DVD would have never materialized. In terms of awards and accolades, Professor Nakamura had received the Nishina Memorial Award in 1996, the Materials Research Society Medal Award in 1997, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers Jack A. Morton Award of the British Rank Prize in 1998, the Benjamin Franklin Medal Award in 2002, the Millennium Technology Prize in 2006, the Chorralski Award in 2007, the Prince of Asturias Award for Technical Scientific Research in 2008, the Howie Award in 2009, and the Technology and Engineering Emmy Award 2012, awarded by the National Academy of Television and Arts and Sciences. He was elected as a Fellow of the United States National Academy of Engineering in 2003, and as mentioned by our Vice Chancellor, the highlight of his uh, career so far, in 2014, Professor Nakamura was the recipient of the Nobel Prize for Physics for the invention of the efficient blue light emitting diode, which has enabled bright and energy saving white light sources. And in the same year, Professor Nakamura received the Order of Culture Award from his home nation in Japan. He was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2015 and has received the 2015 Charles Stark Draper Prize for Engineering as well as the 2015 Global Energy Prize in Russia. Since the year 2000, Professor Nakamura has been a professor of materials in electrical and computer engineering at the University of California, Santa Barbara and holds more than 200 US patents, as well as over 300 Japanese patents. Professor Nakamura has published over 550 papers in his field. He's also the research director of the Solid State Lighting and Electronic Energy Electronic Center, and the Cree chair in Solid State Lighting and Displays, and has co-founded Sora Incorporated in 2008, which operates vertically integrated fabrication facilities in California's Silicon Valley, as well as Santa Barbara. Ladies and gentlemen, all in all, we are truly honoured, deeply grateful and humbled to have Professor Suji Nakamura. I give you Suji Nakamura Sinse.
Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks so much for uh, about the great uh, introduction. So, so t um, uh, today's uh, lecture is for for public for public or for general audience. So I changed my title and uh, my talk a uh, little bit. So, uh, at first I like to thank a lot for the quest, uh, Jeffrey. Yeah, thank you so much. So because uh, uh, recently we did a big breakthrough of blue LEDs with the support of Crest. And uh, so this is, uh, you know, this our latest big breakthrough. Uh, <coughs> so this shows, uh, you know, our latest UCSB result, uh, you know. So this shows uh, wall plug efficiency or, or external quantum efficiency. So our UCSB latest blue LED is the uh, external quantum is this level, and the uh, wall is this level, because the voltage is a little bit high. So these are, uh, you know, this, uh, this one is on a commercially, currently commercially available blue LEDs. All of the LED company making this uh, level of blue LEDs as a commercial base. You can see, uh, you know, we, by solving the voltage problem, our wall progression is almost 30% higher than the currently commercially available blue LEDs. You know, this is uh, almost a game changer result of blue LED. Uh, I can't talk about details of this technology because still uh, we are applying a lot of IP. And, uh, you know, this great invention came from the, with the support of Crest. I think thank a lot for Jeffrey. So uh, next I talk about how I could invent a blue LED so story. So this is a map of Japan. Japan is composed of four islands. Smallest island is called Shikoku Island. So I worked only in inside of a small island of Shikoku Island. I never went to Tokyo and Osaka, big city, never. Always I stayed in the smallest island, Shikoku Island. So I was born here is uh, Oku, you know, small uh, uh, village, village. And uh, at the second grade, when I became an elementary school, I was second grade of elementary school, I moved to the Oz City. So I started here, Oz City, up to high school. You know, and after graduating high school, I went to University of Tokushima. You know? <laughs> I, oh, sorry. University of Tokushima. Because University of Tokushima is uh, in Japan, not the top ranking. Opposite, just bottom, across the bottom ranking university. You know? <laughs> because my grade was not so good. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I went to University of Tokushima. And, uh, you know, in Japan, top ranking universities are uh, Tokyo University, Kyoto University, Osaka University. You never had a Tokushima University because this is a local small university. And after graduation of University of Tokushima, you know, I joined the Nichiya Chemical Industry. Here is a, you know, it's located in Anan City. It's also a small city, you know. It, you know, it takes uh, one hour from Tokushima to Anan City. And, uh, you know, so my major was electrical engineering. You know, at that time, for all of you know, students' dream, after graduation, students' dream is to, to join a big company. Like uh, in Japan, Panasonic, Toshiba, Sony. Uh, my case, same. My dream was after graduation, university question, I want to join a big company. But, uh, but uh, due to the private reason, I made a decision. I want, I, I want, I want to stay in Tokushima City. But uh, in Tokushima, you know, Anan City is basically no big company, only tiny, tiny company. So, <laughs> so I, you know, I joined the Nichia Chemical Industry because uh, my major was electrical engineering. Nichia is a pure chemical company, you know, and uh, and the company size is very small company. Number of employees of 180 people, and the company revenue was about 20 million dollars, and the pure chemical company, and uh, you know. But anyway, so I worked for Nichia Chemical Industry here for 23 years, you know. And uh, so, and at, for at Nichia, I could invent blue LEDs, green LEDs, and also white LEDs, also violet laser dial. And then I moved to the United States because I became boring in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Also, another problem is that at Nichia, we invent the blue LED, green LED, everything independently from Japanese government, independently from Japanese university. We never use any government fund at all, zero. And no collaboration at all of the outside. Only we, you know, isolated the independent everything at Nichia. Because my, that is my company's founder's policy. No collaboration. <laughs> Could you believe? <laughs> so that's caused some kind of problem. No? <laughs> uh, today I won't talk about those problems. <laughs> uh, so next is uh, what is an uh, LED? So this is a uh, sunlight. For, for human being, most of gentle lighting is sunlight because the human were being uh, raised under sunlight. So using LED or laser diode, we have to copy the sunlight. So this is a uh, basic LED structures. Uh, basically, you know, LED composed of three layers. You know, you can see blue, red, green layers. So we need three layers to make high efficient LEDs. This is a blue layer is called the N-type layer, and the red layer is called the emitting layer. Because red layer emits the uh, real, uh, emit the blue over green, or you know, those colors. And the uh, green layer called the P-type layer. So these three layers require to, to make high efficient LEDs. So these three layers grow on substrate. For in the case of blue LEDs, we use a sapphire substrate. So basically for LED, we need three layers. And uh, so after you know, developing three layers, we could uh, uh, develop the high efficient blue LEDs in 93. Also, same time, we started the commercialization of high efficient blue LEDs in 1993. And uh, so for, em for emitting layer, this red layer, for emitting layer, we use this material, indium gallium nitride. By changing our composition of this indium gallium nitride, we can make uh, a UV, UV to uh, red color LEDs by changing composition using the same structure, just changing this composition. You know. So, but right now, considering about the efficiency, we, we you know, company are making a product of UV to green LEDs. And the biggest market for the blue LEDs is the white LEDs. So how to make white is just the mixing of red, blue and yellow, we can make white. And also mixing of three primary color, we can make white. But right now, this most popular technique, this one, because it's more simple, it's easy. But the problem is, uh, uh, you know, ooh, ooh. Oh. this uh, uh, this uh, technique is uh, there's a problem because blue direct come from blue LED chip, so you know, so this is a real white uh, white LED structures. So you know, so blue direct come from blue LED chip and the yellow come from phosphor. This yellow phosphor is excited by blue uh, light, and uh, this phosphor emit the yellow and the mixing of yellow and the blue we can make white. But uh, you can see blue light direct come, direct come from blue LED chip. So it means uh, you know, this blue uh, light has a very narrow spectrum. So LED emission is always very narrow spectrum. So you can see this uh, white, LED, white LED spectrum. So blue light direct come from blue LED chip. So very narrow spectrum. But the uh, yellow come from uh, phosphor, young phosphor. It's very broad spectrum. So in order to make white color, this peak intensity of blue should be very strong because narrow spectrum we use. Yellow is very broad and peak intensity weak is okay. So this strong peak intensity of blue causes, uh, you know, disrupt the circadian cycle or suppress of the melatonin. So this causes some kind of health hazard problem because peak, you know, recently, you know, January this year, and the biggest customer of the white LED is Apple computer. Because Apple computer use a white LED for the backlight of iPhone, iPad, computer. So you can see Apple computer say, you know, Apple move up to the blue light to danger. The blue spike in the white light up from an electronic device reduces the production of the sleep hormone melatonin and has been linked to various health disorders, including cancer. So, <laughs> You have to be careful <laughs> because especially for you have a small children, small children enjoy a TV game, you know, 
Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah. so, so then yeah, and they watch TV, and also now lighting uses uh, these white LEDs. So long-term irradiation, you know, children would have uh, some kind of health hazard problem. But uh, all the people is okay, you know, because uh, all the people has, uh, I don't know what kind of reason, cause uh, you know, this, or I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So especially for small children, you have to be careful. So, so only blue is a problem. And uh, so, so only solution is, uh, only solution is, uh, you know, you have to use the white LEDs made by violet LEDs. So right now, violet LED, uh, we don't see any health hazard problem. Only blue has a, cause a health hazard problem. And uh, our company, Solar, is making white LEDs made by violet LEDs. So please use our company's uh, product. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Right now, only health lighting is made by violet LEDs. No, but you know, Apple computer say dangerous. You know, yeah, you have to be careful. And right now, all commercial available white is made probably 99% white is made by using blue LEDs. You know, so it will be dangerous. So anyway, using blue LEDs, we can make this white LED uh, lamp. And this shows also the efficiency of the conventional red, blue, green LEDs as a function of the developed years. So basically, in a red LED was developed in the 60s, and the efficiency of red LEDs increased gradually like this. And so since, uh, you know, basically 60s, many, many science tried to develop blue and green LEDs in order to make any kind of colors. But nobody could develop. Nobody could, you know, make it. But uh, at the, I told at the Nietzsche Chemical Industry, local, small, tiny company, independently we could develop high efficient blue LED in '93, also green LED is '95, and so three primary colors available since '95. We could make any kind of color, including white. So it's amazing, you know. We did. We never done any collaboration with the university outside the industry, we never used any government money, zero. Totally independent, you know, at this tiny company, we developed everything. Uh, it's amazing, you know. Uh, that, you know, that's in Japan, you know, all of the Japanese academic people are not happy <laughs> about it, you know. So, this is, they complain a lot, you know. Okay, so, and so also in my case, you know, I joined, in my case, I joined, you know, I, Graduate University of Tokushima in '79 here, and then I joined the Nietzsche Chemical Industry. So for first ten years, from '79 uh, to '88, basically I developed these conventional red LEDs, conventional red LEDs, by reading the many many papers and the patent. And but uh, I could develop three products. But the problem is all the big company was selling these conventional red LEDs. My company is a tiny company, no name value. So, serious, so very poor. I couldn't sell uh, only 20,000 US dollars per month. So, in that case, no profit. So, so and then at my company, all my, my boss, manager boss, you know, complained a lot. You waste a lot of money for R&D and uh, no sales at all. So, <laughs> so, and also I became so angry. Because I was, uh, you know, I always followed uh, what my boss asked me to do, you know, and uh, I could uh, develop three products and sell it very poor. They complain a lot, you know. <laughs> so also I became angry. So in uh, so around 80, 80, 89, I became so desperate. So so finally I, you know, I also oh, I have to quit the company. I made the decision. I have to quit the company. So before quitting the company, I wanted to do what I want to do. That's uh, the blue LED research. Because at that time, you know, all, all over the world, basically many scientists tried to develop blue and the green LEDs. So I wanted to do. And uh, so basically, I, I joined the company in 78, oh no, 79 here. So after joining a company, always I joked with my boss, you know. So why don't you do the research of blue LED? And uh, my boss always said, oh, you are crazy. Do you know my company has a budget? No, no budget, zero. Because uh, just, you know, one year before my joining company, company did a layoff, big layoff, because no profit at all. So 
So no uh, research budget, no? And the next is, uh, you know, brain. I just graduated local university, you know, after getting a master's degree, you know? Not a famous university. So no brain. But at that time, in, during those period in Japan, like Sony, Toshiba, uh, Panasonic, Sharp, they spent $100 million for three years to develop blue LEDs, and they formed a project team. Those project team composed of the they graduate, you know, they, they composed the famous uh, big scientists. They graduated from University of Tok uh, Tokyo or Kyoto. No, they formed the project team, 10 project uh, scientists composed, no? But in my case, alone. So no way, no? So, so always uh, I joked with my boss, but uh, no money, no brain, no way, no? <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, in 88, 89, I became so desperate. So, so before quitting, I wanted to do this. So, so all my, my company boss complained a lot. So, so I went to the uh, president, also chairman's office directory, you know. So I asked the chairman, director, so I wanted to do any research. It's okay? He said, okay, no problem. Okay. <laughs> he was, his age was 70, I think close to 80 years old, no? So he couldn't understand meaning. So next I, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, next I asked, him, oh, you say, okay, so please give me five million dollars for the research funding. He said, okay, no problem. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought he is Alzheimer or something, you know? <laughs> and uh, next, I, I never been to foreign countries, so I wanted to go to foreign country. And uh, so I asked him, can I go to the University of Florida for one year? Oh, it's okay, no problem. <laughs> so only a couple of minutes, you know? He said everything, okay. <laughs> I was so surprised. I expected that I, could, I would be fired, you know? But he said, okay. <laughs> then, so top guy said, okay. So I had to do the brilliant research. So basically, 80 to 89, I went to University of Florida for one year as a visiting researcher. And so I came back to Japan in 89. So in 89, I started the blue LED research. So I only I needed only four years to develop blue LED. So blue LED is very easy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the reason is this one, because I worked for conventional red LEDs for 10 years. Because the Nichia is a pure chemical company. They had no background of semiconductor technology, zero, when I started blue, uh, red LED research in 88, zero. So I had to develop all kinds of technology of red LEDs from nothing to, the, to make real red LEDs. From nothing to everything for spending 10 years. So, for, you know, so I could run all kinds of technology of, to, to make conventional red LED. For blue LEDs, just I change the material from this material to this, ma this material. And uh, also I change the growth technique. For red LEDs, I use uh, liquid phase epitaxial method, but for blue LEDs, just I use MOCBD. So I change two, two things, material and growth method. Other process is same. So that is the reason only I needed four years, so you know. So for young science, most important sometimes for, you know, some meaningless effort, sometimes it works later, no? <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically after, you know, developing blue LED, you can see all kinds of these applications, uh, you know, okay. And uh, so this is my private industry, is a plant factory using blue and red LEDs. Because the plant is, the color is green, green, so green is reflected, so they need only blue and red. And uh, in Japan, you know, it's like uh, Fukushima. Fukushima, you know, Fukushima due to tsunami, all the factory damaged. So they started this uh, plant factory in Fukushima prefecture. But they, all of the plant factory is bankrupt. Because only growth rate two times. Because growth rate, no night time, so growth rate becomes two times, no? But, uh, but the, this growth rate two times is, uh, you know, economical, no, no way. It's cost is so huge. So cost is too high, so no way. But recently, one university says they improved the growth rate five times, comparison with the outside plant growth. So in that case, okay, cost is uh, almost competitive cost. 
So I think uh, this uh, is a very promising technology for the, for future plant growth, especially uh, desert area. Desert area, they can make a big plant factory, and uh, you know. So anyway, so LED used for the all kinds of lighting. So this shows the uh, efficiency of conventional lighting and also LED. So, so oil lamp is efficiency is on point one lumen part. Fluorescent lamp is seventy lumen part. So LED is uh, R and D level is three hundred lumen per part. But for commercial base is uh, half of this value, so one hundred fifty lumen part. So, so one hundred fifty lumen part is in basically two times higher than the conventional fluorescent lamp and ten times higher than the uh, bulb lamp. So, so by replacing all of conventional uh, lamp with LEDs, we can save a lot of energy. Also, LED lifetime is almost of fifty or forty years. So, so this lifetime is very short, no? So another interesting application, solar powered LED lighting. So, so basically these regions, no electricity, so it means no lighting at nighttime. And about 1.5 billion people, you know, they have no access to the electricity, and it means at nighttime, no lighting. And these regions, people use this kerosene lamp, oil lamp. And uh, the problem is the oil lamp is uh, very expensive. Now oil is very expensive. So they have to spend uh, $150 per year to buy oil. But now these regions, they use this technology, just LED. It is quite easy operated by battery. This battery is charged by solar cell during daytime. And the biggest advantage of this one is very cheap. Only $3 per year. And the reason of the 3 dollar is, uh, you know, LED lifetime is 50 years, solar cell lifetime is uh, 20 or 30 years, a battery lifetime is only two or three years. So battery lifetime, short battery lifetime, this uh, price, cost. If battery lifetime uh, more than 10 years, this one is almost a 0.3 something. So almost free. So battery is the biggest issue right now. So. If you want to get a Nobel Prize, please work for the you know, <laughs> battery. You know, Tesla motor is disparate. They need a good, uh, you know, a good battery for Tesla motor. And uh, so next is, uh, you know, why is so the, uh, the very difficult to develop blue LEDs? I talk about that one. So basically in 80s, 70s, uh, blue LEDs such are very popular worldwide. So at that time, two kind of material available, zinc selenide or gallium nitrate-based material, because the uh, emission color is determined by materials. So for blue, it means uh, only two materials, available, zinc selenide or gallium nitrate. So this is, uh, you know, so this is a gallium nitrate grown sapphire. You can see this dark line. This dark line is a crystal defect. You can see gallium nitrate, a lot of crystal defect. Zinc selenide. Nothing, no crystal defect. So in 70s, 80s, no, in the in the field of semiconductor technology, people hate the crystal defect. Like silicon, no, Semi silicon semiconductor, crystal defect zero. So LED same. We hate crystal defect. So 70s, 80s, all of basic scientists selected zinc cell because no crystal defect. Gallium nitride, oh my gosh, you know, too, too many crystal defects. No way at that time. You know. So basically, I started blue research in 89, you know. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. So 89, so, so after coming back from University of Florida, you know. So at that time, you know, basically all of scientists selected zinc cement because uh, this rocket is the crystal defect. It's much lower, but uh, gallium nitride, uh, this crystal defect is uh, six order higher than the, this zinc cement. So, so, you know. So in Japan, in this field, the biggest uh, conference is Japanese Society of Applied Physics Conference. You know, so they had the spring conference and the fall conference. I attended the spring conference in 92. So at first, I went to the Garim Nitrate session. So Garim Nitrate session is a chair, session chair of the Professor Akasaki, and the speaker was the Professor Amano, and also one more student. You know? And each student, this session, is, uh, each speaker has a 15 minute time. So two speakers, it took on 30 minutes, you know? <laughs> and the audience is uh, one person from Toyota Gozi, one person from Nichia, that is me. So two audience, <laughs> it took only 30 minutes. And uh, so 30 minutes, I finished this environment. Next, I went to Zinc Serenation. 
Zinc cell nation is always, you know, held the biggest uh, conference room. And the number of audience is more than 500. I couldn't enter the you know, room at all. Oh my gosh. And uh, at that time, you know, all of you know, famous professor science said, you know, government has no future, government people have to move the zinc cell, you know. Oh. So in my case, you know, 89, I came back to the University of Florida, you know. So uh, when I, I went to University of Florida for one year, from 80 to 89, uh, and uh, I, at the University of Florida, I had to work together with the PhD students over there. So all of PhD students you know, asked me, did, uh, yeah, professor, uh, Mr. Nakamura, do you have PhD degree? So I said, no, because uh, I had only master's degree. Because the University of Tokushima has no, P had no PhD course, only master's degree. So only I had master's degree. And the next uh, you know, student asked me, have you published any scientific paper? I said, no, zero paper. <laughs> At the age of 35 years old, no? And then started treating me like a technician. In the United States, if people don't have PhD degree, they are called technician. In the United States, if you want to become a scientist, you have to have PhD degree. You know, so they treat me like technician, but for me, they are like a kid because I developed all kinds of LED technology myself from nothing to the, the other LED. But they treat me like a technician, no? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so one year later, uh, you know, I came back to Japan. My dream became getting a PhD degree. So in Japan, at that time, you could get the PhD degree, just publishing at least five scientific papers. We didn't have to go to university to get a PhD degree. Just publishing at least five scientific papers, we, got, we received a PhD degree. It's called a paper degree. So my dream was getting a PhD degree, you know. So, so my dream of getting a PhD degree means that I, my dream was I have to publish at least five, five, five scientific papers. So if I select zinc selenite, I think no way, because zinc selenite, tons of papers. Gallium nitrate, basically only a few papers. You know, only a few papers uh, you know, written by Professor Akasaki Amara, you know, only a few papers, almost nothing. So if I select the gallium nitride, I thought it was easy to publish papers. So that's the reason I selected gallium nitride. <laughs> but I never thought I could invent blue LEDs, no? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, so basically in 89, uh, after coming back from University of Florida, I started blue LED research. So biggest problem is that these two layers are missing. This layer is uh, available since the 60s in the type one, but uh, no emitting layer, no P-type layer. So I had to develop these two layers. So, so at first, I had to grow crystal growth of gallium nitrate using MOCBD. So I purchased commercially available MOCBD. It cost two million US dollars. Chairman gave me five million US dollars. So I purchased, I could purchase two million US dollars MOCBD. And at that time, no, there are no MOCBD for gallium nitride growth. This uh, initial I purchased uh, MOCBD, which you use for the gallium arsenide crystal growth. I tried to gallium nitride growth for a couple of months, but no crystal growth. So, so I thought, oh, I had to quit the company, no? <laughs> because uh, I got five minutes, no result. But uh, I think, uh, so, so I thought, oh, what the best way? So, so, so this crystal growth is very bad means uh, the reactor was something wrong. So, so I made decision, I have to modify this reactor myself. So since that time, so every morning I modified the reactor of MOCBD, and then afternoon I did a uh, epitaxia growth run maybe five or six times. I continued this pattern every day for one and a half year. Every morning I modified the reactor because the uh, main part is a uh, yeah, main part of the composed of quartz. So for past 10 years, so I, you know, I bend, welded and cutting the, this quartz myself so I could modify the reactor myself every morning. And every afternoon, the fire run. I continue one and a half year later. No Sunday, no Saturday. I enjoyed only three days New Year's vacation, you know. And then one and a half year later, I could develop the two floor MOCVD. I named two floor MOCVD. This is a two floor, no? one main floor and another floor. And uh, so I developed this two floor MOCBD in October 1990. So before October 1990, all the professor, Akasaki Amano, and uh, other noble they showed the best result in the world. 
But after invention of this MOCBD, October 1990, always our group showed the best result. <laughs> always. Still best result. Nichia's uh, LED is the highest efficient LEDs because Nichia used this to for MOCBD. So this is the most important uh, invention for me in my life. After this invention, every two or three months, I could achieve the breakthrough in this field. Because this reactor is so good, any crystal growth, best crystal growth in the world, and any device growth, most efficient blue LED, most efficient green LED. So, so this is the most important. So after this invention, two flow MOCVD, first, you know, oh, oh yeah. It's a, first is a P type layer, green layer. So using two flow MOCVD, I could make very good P type layer, you know, just, just using a summer reading. Also, I clarified the mechanism because, uh, you know, since 60s, many scientists tried to make P type gallium nitride, and uh, they couldn't understand why they couldn't get a P type gallium nitride, just uh, I sort of hydrogen. Hydrogen was. Uh, but a bad, bad thing, you know, just using some light, we can remove the hydrogen from acceptors. So this is called hydrogen passivation. So I clarify the mechanism. But anyway, so I solved all kinds of problem, P-type garment, P-type like green layer in 92, using two flow MOCVD. And the next is the emitting layer. Emitting layer, the most important layer, which emit a blue, green. You know, since the 60s, uh, several groups tried to grow this material. Nobody could make this material, but uh, using two flow MOCVD, Ooh. We could make the first, uh, uh, you know, high quality integral nitride using two prime CBD, which showed the very strong blue and the violet emission at the temperature. So basically, in 1992, I could solve the, these uh, layers problem. You know, in 92, we got to this uh, emitting layer and this green layer. So now we solved all of the problem. So now stuck with these three layers, you could make a high efficient blue LED in 1992. So, but for one year, our company, you know, kept a secret because we prepared for mass production, you know, because our company, tiny company, you know. So one year we prepared for mass production yeah, to make a real product. And in 1993, at the end of 1993, we did a big break uh, press release of, you know, high efficient blue LEDs as a commercial base. Uh, this is our first uh, product of uh, high efficient blue LEDs. Because uh, we did a big press release, but uh, you know, nobody believed. Because Nichia is a tiny company, pure chemical company. Suddenly, you know, Nichia Chemical developed the high efficient blue LED, and at the same time we started the commercial day. Nobody believed. So we, put, uh, we, you know, uh, we have uh, Osaka office and Tokyo office. At the Osaka office, Tokyo office, we, you know, we, we demonstrated the blue LED over there, and uh, all the scientists skeptical. So all the scientists contacted me. Yeah, please go to Osaka office and Tokyo office. We put the blue LEDs. And they went there, and they said, oh my god, you know, they, oh, this is a real blue LED, you know? Yeah, so that's the story. And, uh, and uh, so this uh, invention, so they, this uh, Nobel Prize Foundation, they defined my, our first high percent blue LEDs. And uh, so basically, you know, this time, uh, Professor Akasaki Amano and I received the Nobel Prize in physics. So basically, Professor Akasaki Amano, they developed the, this buffer layer and uh, to improve the crystal quality, quality aluminum buffer. And also, they made the first P-type gram nitrate using uh, electron beam radiation treatment. And uh, so that's the reason they received the Nobel Prize in physics. So in my case, just uh, we saw I clarified a mechanism P-type gram nitrate. No, I don't have the participation. Also, most important, we developed a fast uh, emitting layer in 1992. So that's uh, their contribution. Also, we developed a fast uh, violet laser diode for blue ray DVD application in 1995. And this is uh, our first uh, violet laser diode. So now, this uh, violet laser diode or blue laser diode used for the next generation uh, lighting. Okay, next is uh, second generation LEDs. Because the first generation is a lot of crystal defect. But uh, I think uh, next second generation is a gun on gun, home epitaxial growth, means this is a no crystal defect. You know, or first generation is a you know, heterepita, you know, lot of crystal defect. So basically, I moved to the United States in 2000 because in Japan, became, uh, you know, I became so boring. 
because uh, I developed the uh, blue LED, green LED residue, so, so boring. So I moved to the United States to challenge every, uh, you know, in the United States. And uh, so in 2000, I went to University of Florida, uh, uh, no, University of uh, Santa Barbara, not University of California, Santa Barbara. And the first day, I went to my office, and a lot of phone, phone is ringing, you know, phone, phone. And I took phone, all the phone call, phone call came from the venture capitals of Silicon Valley, and uh, they said, oh, Professor Naka, yes, and why don't you start a company? And, uh, <laughs> and I said, no, I, I cannot understand the English, and I don't know anything about America, so I, I said, no. But the next phone, same, so. And, uh, and this, at one point, you know, famous, uh, one, of the, one of the best uh, one, top uh, venture capitalists of Silicon Valley came to University of California, Santa Barbara, suddenly. And I met him with Steve Denbass. And uh, he said, oh, you have started a company. And, this, and I said, no, no, Steve said, no, no, we don't know anything. We have no result, you know, just uh, Nakamura came to you. And, uh, but uh, in 2006, you know, at the UCSB, with this collaboration Steve, Jim, and uh, we developed a very good LEDs using gun gun technology. And the same venture capital said, oh, this time you have to start a company. And so they, we start the company, and you know, the company name is Sora. So, so always venture company has to do different technology. So we, we start the company using, by developing the violet LED to make white. Because at the time, all of the company is making white LEDs using blue LEDs. But we expected violet is much better to make high quality color white LEDs. Because, you know, so we select the violet to make white to improve the color quality of white. And then, you know, now we are making all kinds of white light LED lamp using violet LEDs. We never expected blue cause health hazard at that time, you know. We are lucky, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so solar is, uh, you know, LED is usually rectangular shape, but uh, we use uh, solar is a uh, uh, triangular shape LEDs to Im increase light extraction machines. And, uh, you know, so wall polarization is relatively high because uh, using gun on gun, no crystal defect. Also, we select the violet LEDs. So, uh, you know, so blue is not so high in combat to uh, violet. So these are conventional blue LEDs, rectangular shape, lot of crystal defect, but the solar violet is gun on gun, no crystal defects, and triangular shape. And uh, the important thing is, uh, you know, so Soros white aid is uh, all of blue green red com come from the phosphor. The, these uh, phosphors are excited by violet LEDs. That's the uh, most important. So you can see this is uh, you know a white color. You can see for the, so this is uh, you know for conventional halogen. Oh, the sunlight daylight. Most of the daylight. The daylight the sunlight. Sunlight is a full color. No, there are no missing color from violet to red color, no missing color, full spectrum. And the halogen, conventional halogen incandescent bulb, same, so full color. So means uh, conventional halogen incandescent but very healthy light, because the same as the sunlight. Because sunlight is the most healthy light for human being. But the problem is the uh, current commercial available white LED made by blue. You can say current commercial available white LED made by blue, no violet color, no blue green, no deep Red. This is a totally different from sunlight or conventional incandescent bulb. So long-term irradiation, we don't know what kind of problem happen in the future. But uh, solar white LED made by violet, violet LED excited blue, green, red phosphor, full color, same as uh, sunlight. So only you know healthy white LED is on the solar's. Uh, white LED, because the same as sunlight, you know? So, so this one, but the, right now, 99% commercial level of white LED, this one. Also, violet, you know, also white paper or white shirts, you know, included uh, some kind of fluorescent materials to show the beautiful white. It's called a uh, brightening agent, you know? This is a fluorescent material. This is material only excited by UV or violet, not blue. So, you know, current commercial available white is made by blue. This uh, 
this white is used for the, this white to eradicate the uh, white shirts, white paper, its color becomes a uh, yellowish color, not white. But uh, using a solar lamp, violet excites these uh, brightening agents, so white is white. You know, so I think in the view of the white color, this is much better. And uh, and the third generation uh, lighting, I took a third generation lighting, third lighting. This is should, would be laser lighting. Uh, because this shows the ex uh, efficiency uh, of the LED and laser diode as a function of the current density. So in the case of blue LEDs, with increased current density, uh, efficiency become very small. At one kiloampere scale, almost no lighting. But on the other hand, laser diode at a very high current density, efficiency is still very high. So, so in the case of, in order to make a 6 to watt, the incandescent equipment lamp, so using LED, the emitting area become huge, big, big, because uh, in the case of LED, operating current density should be around here, because the peak intensity, peak efficiency is very high around here, so almost zero current density region, so means the uh, emitting area very large. But in the case of laser diode, we can operate the laser at a uh, one kilo per ampere scale change, also one third higher current density, so we can use a very tiny chip to make laser lighting. So I think for in the view of the cost, everything for system cost, I think uh, laser lighting would be the future technology. So already blue, uh, hyper blue is that we use for the TV, uh, laser TV, you know, and uh, you know, and also <coughs> laser lighting already used for the automobile headlamp, you know, especially for uh, Audi or BMW, they already they use uh, laser uh, lighting for automobile headlamp. So, because in that case, only that distance becomes almost uh, one kilometer, but the LED is only 300 meters. So, you know, because uh, laser lighting is very directional lighting, so, you know, also efficiency becomes much higher. And uh, so this is uh, some award, no, I forgot about the award. <laughs> some award, we attend the award ceremony. This is Steve Denbass, you know. <laughs> Steve, Steve is the uh, CEO of our laser company, Solar Laser Diode. We have uh, started two companies. Solar is a uh, LED lighting company. Our second company is a laser, uh, uh, solar laser diode. It's a laser lighting company. Steve is the CEO. And uh, also this is uh, our uh, marketing guy of our uh, solar laser diode. This is a BMW guy, you know. You know, you know. So Steve wants to be a uh, James Bond here, you know. <laughs> So uh, at the UCS, we have a solid lighting uh, 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 energy electronic center with, uh, you know, Cresto and the uh, Malaysian company or uh, university joined this uh, center, you know. So this is uh, Steve Denbass, me. And Steve and I, and also Jim Speck is, uh, Jim Speck is not here because Jim Speck is very shy to take a photo, you know. <laughs> so Jim Speck, Steve, and I working for the LED laser dial. And the Mesh is mainly working for the power electron devices. And others are basically uh, PhD student. Uh, total about 40 PhD students involved in uh, this center. At this, through this center, we develop all kind of nitrate-based uh, emitting device, power devices, solar cell, everything. And uh, uh, through this center, you know, also support the Crest. I told you we developed recently. We achieved a big breakthrough of the blue LED, and this is a game changer uh, technology. Okay, I think that this, so Santa, UCSB, you know, University of California, Santa Barbara, you know, located uh, around the beautiful beach, same as here, you know, <laughs> we have a very beautiful campus, you know. I think that is, thanks so much. Thank you, Professor Dr. Shuji Nakamura. Now, it's not often we get a chance to have a discourse and or questions with the uh, Nobel Laureate. So with uh, Professor's kind consent, we would like to open the floor for questions and answers. Kindly state your name and affiliation using the mics provided. And you can have an academic discourse with Professor Nakamura. Any questions from the floor? Yes, please. Kindly use the mic, yes. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and very good morning. Thank you for your presentation. 
Actually, my question about the conversion, the light conversion from blue to white light. So what, what is the uh, optimum parameter to get high efficiency, conversion efficiency? If I have the YAG uh, mixed with the silicon, what is the uh, optimum particle size of the YAG? And what is the refractive index, optimum refractive index of silicon? <laughs> so I, I'm not the expert of the phosphor, so I don't know. So uh, my expert is uh, professional is how to make a no, nice chip, chip, LED chip, not for. <laughs> Sorry, I cannot comment. On that. I'm not so familiar. Okay, with that. so phosphor for the light practice. emitting diode only. Yeah. So I have one question: yeah. How to achieve the uh, current uh, uniformity current? separating in the surface of the light emitting diode. U uniformity of the epitaxial wire? Yeah, the current, the current uh, distribution current on the uh, light emitting diode. Oh, I think, oh, good question. I, I think uh, uniformity is always some kind of blue. For example, blue, I don't know how much, it, maybe I think uh, Blue means a 450 nanometer plus minus uh, 5 nanometer plus minus 10 nanometer, something like that, no? And, but the problem is, uh, oh, the violet is the same, almost the same. Violet is at uh, 410 plus minus 5 or 10 nanometer. But uh, you, when you make uh, white LEDs using blue, blue directly come from blue LED, no? So blue is always fluctuating plus minus 5 plus 10 nanometer. So white color, fluctuate. But in the case of violet, violet LED also fluctuate plus minus five, perhaps 10 nanometer, but the violet doesn't uh, come from, uh, contribute to the white, because the bl all blue, green, red come from phosphor. Even if violet fluctuate, blue, green, red doesn't fluctuate. So using violet LEDs to make white, color is always consistent. But uh, using blue, blue dye come from, you know, always a uh, white color is fluctuated. So that is the uh, color fluctuation. Uh, the violet is much, much better to make a consistent white LEDs. So how about the extraction of the light from the gallium nitride? What is the uh, optimum way to make high efficiency extraction? Light extraction? Yeah. Okay. I think uh, right now, so as a triangular shape one, is the uh, highest efficient light extraction efficiency. I think uh, they claim 95%, something. Yeah. I think that is the highest one, using triangular shape. Uh, so no, any process on the top of the surface? I think there is some kind of surface uh, roughening, I think. Rough. Yeah. OK. And uh, mainly, they, they use a sidewall to, uh, sidewall to extract the light. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other questions, please? Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Yifeng from Broadcom. So I have a question regarding the graph that you showed just now regarding the improved in wall plug efficiency. I uh, presume that is uh, GAN on GAN? Is that? Uh, no, I can comment on that <laughs> because there we are working on a lot of IP right now. So okay. Yeah. okay. Because I, I was thinking of uh, further questioning about whether it's uh, anything to do with uh, tunnel junction, things like that. Sorry, I can't comment anything <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the IP is most important for us. Okay. So right now we are working for the IP. Uh, not the IP. Then probably I ask a more general question. Uh, for tunnel junction, uh, basically we know that the voltage drop will increase, right? So do you foresee any application issue with uh, higher voltage, although the current will be lower? So the tunnel junction increase the voltage? You can show. Yeah, I don't, because I have read some uh, articles saying that the uh, oh. I mean by adding tunnel junction the uh, voltage. Uh, what what this job of the diet will increase, right? Is is that uh, mm. correct or my understanding is wrong? No, you know, case okay, voltage no, it doesn't increase using tunnel junction. Okay, the voltage okay. is a little lower than the conventional contact. Yeah, I think I think that's yeah. that's good. Mm. Um, then regarding the uh, using uh, UV um, to excite the red, green, and blue phosphor, right? Violet. Uh, violet. Yeah, violet. Yeah. Sorry, uh, violet to to excite red, green, and blue phosphor. So the uh, resultant um, spectrum will still have some uh, violet color, right? So will that pose any issue on uh, degradation of uh, material uh, 
indoor, like um, for example, some some material plastic or what, uh, the discoloration of material, uh, the color of the material because of that, uh, compared to uh, normal blue plus phosphor, yellow phosphor LED. Yes, yeah, uh, plastic, we are talking about plastic. No? Plastic is easily de de uh, shows the degradation by the irradiation of violet, no? uh, also blue. So we have to select the special plastic molding materials. Uh -huh. Also phosphor, you know, some phosphor is, uh, uh, especially, uh, I don't know, so some phosphor has uh, easily degraded when we use uh, violet AD to make, uh, you know. So we have to select, we have to select the uh, special phosphors. You know, for blue, green, red phosphors, sure. we selected special phosphors. Yeah. Also, molding materials, we had to, uh, you know, find the special molding materials, plastic materials. Um, I mean, in terms of application, so if we use that kind of um, uh, LED to shine on, for example, like a piece of art, mm -hmm. right? Will, will that actually increase the degradation of the uh, those, those things that the light is shining on? Oh, I told you. So basically. Uh, Blue, green, red come from phosphor. Those yeah. peak intensity is weak. But violet, some are violet. So violet color is, violet intensity is controlled by some kind of filter or something, no? Uh -huh. So, so, they, so violet is controlled. If the violet is too strong for the, those applications, we minimize using some kind of filter. Okay. Yeah, so it's okay. And, uh, and the peak intensity of blue, green is much weaker than the conventional white, no? Yeah. So, uh, th sorry, the last question is that uh, regarding uh, GAN on GAN, so we know that the uh, the current density can we can go very high and still maintain the water plant efficiency. So uh, what is the major uh, barrier for uh, wider commercialization of GAN on GAN? Um, is is the uh, the cost of the bulk uh, GAN crystal the issue or? I think the uh, uh, capacity of the garum nitrate substrate. Uh -huh. I don't know. You know, sapphire you can. Buy a lot of sapphire salt, but the uh, yeah. right amount of gallium salt is small. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I think uh, so that's the reason at the university we are th working for the uh, ammonosamal gross thing to make real bulk gallium nitrate crystals. So I think uh, right now the capacity of the you know gallium nitrate substrate by the those uh, companies is, is still not enough. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, it's limited the amount of gallium nitrate substrate. So if we can make sense, uh, yeah, we can increase the capacity dramatically, you know. Yeah. So roughly, what kind of uh, uh, current density that uh, you're driving with the GAN on GAN chip? I think uh, uh, fi between five and ten times higher than the conventional uh, GAN on sapphire. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Dr. Suji Nakamura, mm -hmm. I want to ask, uh, how long do you think it is until we see laser lighting on the mass market? Huh? <laughs> uh, huh? Would you repeat that again? Uh, how long do you think it is until we see laser lighting on the mass market? Oh, oh okay, laser lighting, okay. I think uh, Steve Dimbas is going, he's a CEO of uh, laser lighting company. <laughs> if I say something, he become mad. He's a top guy, no? so hi, Steve Sandozo. <laughs> uh -huh. Five years, Steve? Ten years. Steve says, CEO of the laser company says, ten years. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, but the CEO says ten years. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Other questions, please? Yes, yes. Hello, I'm uh, Sharon from School of Physics, USM. Regarding the material for blue LED, have you heard of zinc oxide material for blue LED? There's one university professor from Tohoku University who joined back here with ROM in Japan. In, uh, Japan. Huh. They, they claim they want to mass produce uh, blue LED based huh. on zinc oxide. Huh. Yeah, it, it doesn't like materialize. Uh, uh, I spent already they gave up. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. Because the problem is uh, P-type zinc oxide. Because uh, several group uh, reported uh, P-type zinc oxide, but those uh, that are always skeptical, no? doubtful. So I think it's still P-type zinc oxide is the biggest issue. Also, this is also two six materials. Even if we take uh, they could develop the PN junction uh, blue LEDs. The reliability, I expect a lot of problem with reliability. Because 2.6 is uh, 
always very fragile crystals, no? If uh, if water coming to the tsushima is dissolved, no? So the uh, crystal is uh, not a not a robust crystal, very fragile crystal. That's a problem. No? Anyone else? I'm uh, Chu Tong Fat, uh, retired. Uh -huh. <laughs> but my wife works in USM. Uh -huh. Okay, so I understand USM has some research into LED. Uh, Malaysia being quite late to the LED chip development. Uh, what, which area do you recommend uh, Malaysian researchers to do, uh, being a late comer to this scene? Thank you. I think you should talk to Jeffrey because already Crest is collaborating with us. I told you, with the support of Crest, we recently achieved a big breakthrough of blue LEDs. So, so basically, this technology could be used for Malaysian industry media because they joined our center through Crest. We are collaborating. So, Malaysian LED company uses this technology. And, uh, but other company cannot use it because of IP issues. You know, so I think uh, through you know, collaboration with our university, that, that is the most, uh, most easiest and the best way. You know, <laughs> I think. That's the reason, so we, uh, you know, we have great support of uh, Jeffrey of Crest. We could actually a big breakthrough. I don't know, game changer result of Blue LED, this one. I think, you know, yeah. Yes, Prof. Uh, thank you for sharing us uh, with regard to your experience. Mm. I think it's important for all of us that if we work hard and really persevere on something that we do, then we will be very successful. Uh, I'd like you to share with us, um, since you work uh, quite a long time, almost one and a half years, trying to perfect the process mm. to get um, gallium nitride uh, crystal growth uh, perfectly, and eventually uh, by using the two-flow method that you mentioned, Mm -hmm. Maybe you you like to share with us why did you decide to choose the two flow, and what are the things that actually eventually make you think of using that technique to reduce the defect? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, basically, uh, so at the time you know uh, when I started blue LED research using a conventional MOCBD, all the MOCBD used uh, one flow, one flow, and also low pressure. Because uh, always MOCB growth, uh, gas flow should be always laminar flow, not a turbulence flow. No? So only at low pressure and one flow. And, but uh, I was uh, very lazy because uh, when I initially I tried the low pressure, but always the low pressure rotary pump is working. For always uh, this uh, gas is ammonia. Ammonia is a very uh, uh, chemical react reactive material, so rotary pump is easily broken. And so I gave up using uh, rotary pump. So it means uh, no pressure. So it becomes uh, atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure, emotivity, we don't need any pump, no? So I was lazy. So always I try to grow, you know, try to grow galmonite using atmospheric pressure. But uh, all, there are no, always no crystal growth. The reason is atmospheric pressure always due to the, you know, gross temperature, 1,000. means that on the surface, there are huge thermal convection. It's uh, one flow using thermal convection like this, no? Gas does not uh, attach to the substrate. So in order to suppress, we put the another flow to the top. But this idea is a great idea for MOCBD people. Because uh, two flow means that this is called a turbulence flow, not a laminar flow. So you know, so uh, you know, those specialists say this cause uh, so special MOCBD guys never try this because uh, you know, using a simulation always become a turbulence flow. Not laminar, but uh, I tried. I don't care about the theory, simulation, <laughs> and I got the beautiful crystal growth. So also later we we we, we what that visualize the gas flow. It uh, also shows a beautiful uh, laminar flow. So you know, so so basically it, it worked. You know, <laughs> so that's the reason I. We are still kind of good for time. We have one last question. Yes, please. Hi, I'm Marina Chan from Broadcom Technologies. Hmm. 
Yeah, I have a question for you. If you stack the three technologies together, laser, um, the violet, and the blue LED, how would you compare the reliability in terms of the light output over time, the degradation over time? Oh, uh, the laser LED? Violet, yeah, violet uh, LED. Uh, violet, I think. And uh, the blue. I how think reliability is, uh, it, it, it's almost the same, I think. Laser diode also, final, uh, you know, we have to derive it, the uh, lifetime should be at least 10,000 hours. LED is 20,000, 30,000 hours. So I think uh, reliability is almost the same level. Okay, yeah. thank you. Last call for questions. Yes, our final question of the day. Good morning, Professor. Mm -hmm. uh, in your presentation just now, uh, you did show us the future of LED products, mm -hmm. particularly in the area of horticultural lighting and also the laser diode. Mm -hmm. And today, uh, we keep hearing people talking about the future of LED. In the next five to 10 years, the mm -hmm. growth will be tremendous. Mm -hmm. But there's also a concern that this, uh, the long life of LED-based products will mm -hmm. saturate the demand mm -hmm. after its peak. Uh, probably up after 20, 20, 2022. Mm -hmm. And we also see Osram divesting its lighting unit, Philips divesting its lighting unit as well. Mm -hmm. Now, as a co founder of Sora, mm -hmm. how would you conclude this decision by Osram and Philips? I don't know because also I'm Philips, those companies are always very secret, you know. <laughs> so I don't know inside the story. So I, I cannot comment on the Oslo Philips because they don't know, I don't know what they're doing, you know. Because they are very secret, you know. So I don't know. Uh, but uh, we work for universities. Uh, universities, everything is, uh, you know, open. So, so that's the reason, uh, uh, you know, Chris, you know, the Malaysian industry are working together at our university. So. At the uh, point, uh, in the view of our point of our university result, I told you, so right now LED, but the future technology should be laser lighting. Because uh, uh, for example, this room mm -hmm. using a laser lighting, current you know, same size of chip, 1,000 times brighter. So only one la lamp is enough you know, <laughs> to radiate this room. But the laser is uh, current is so small, we need a lot of LED lamp. So, so when you consider the system cost, total cost, Laser lighting should be much cheaper. Uh, yes. Yeah, but right now laser diode means uh, still water pollution is uh, only 30%, and uh, you know also cost is uh, very high. Still, uh, you cannot use a laser laser diode for laser lighting. Uh, it still takes time. It still say 10 years. You know? So, uh, but the, in the future, I think uh, laser lighting will be the future technology. I think. Do you think the long life of laser dieting will saturate its demand after its peak? Hmm? Long? The long life of laser diode. Long life of laser diode, yes. Mm -hmm. Lifetime, right, right now, the, the, which are Osram and Nietzsche is uh, making uh, the laser uh, diode as a product. They, they say they guarantee the lifetime is 10,000 hours, I guess. Oh, I see. So there's a lot shorter than LED's lifetime, right? Yeah, the LED is 30,000 or 40,000, no? But the 10,000 is long, you know, you can calculate, yeah, you know? Course, course because course every day, one day, you know, two hours of operation, you can calculate 10 years, 20 years, you know? It's yeah. so long, you know? Yeah. All right, thank you, Professor. Yeah. Right, thank you, members of the audience, and thank you, Suji Nakamura Sinsi. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for Professor Dr. Suji Nakamura. Uh, I would like to kindly request that Professor Nakamura remain in front and as a mark of our appreciation, as our souvenir of thanks, I would like to kindly invite the Vice-Chancellor to be accompanied by the VVIP guests, Mr. Kiyoshi Itoi, Professor Dato Ahmad Shukri Mustafa Kamal and Mr. Jafri Ibrahim to accompany the Vice-Chancellor in presenting our token of appreciation to the Honourable Professor Dr. Shuji Nakamura.
uh, thank you. And now, if we may, we'd like to have a group photo with the audience. So our VBVIP guests are kindly requested to return to their seats. So thank you. We have come to the end of, uh, of our proceedings this morning. We'd like to thank uh, the Honorable Professor Dr. Shuji Nakamura. We'd also like to thank the organizers and a special thanks to all in presence today. With that, ladies and gentlemen, wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Have a very good day. And everyone is invited for lunch to be VIP guests to the side hall on, the, on your left and to the audience to the hall downstairs. Thank you. See you again. <laughs>